Hi, my name is Clive Allwright. I'm Global Artistic Director for Muck Hair Care here in Australia. And I am up in the beautiful Noosa in Queensland. Is it Noosa or Noosaville? Where are we? Uh, we're actually Noosa Heads. Noosa Heads. And uh, I came up here yesterday for a really good cause to do a, a motorcycle charity ride with my good friend Cameron, who's also a fellow Englishman. And uh, Cameron actually runs the ride up here in, in Noosa uh, on the Sunshine Coast uh, to raise awareness for men's uh, health, mental health and prostate. Um, it's really important for us guys to, to have that conversation and get checked uh, on a regular basis. And so we thought, you know, two creative people up here riding motorbikes as we love to do and then we might as well utilise the best of our time to, to do what we love most and that's, and that's cutting hair and making people look and feel beautiful. Cameron actually has a salon uh, with his partner Liz up here in New Circle Smythe's Hairdressing. And we are in one of the big sponsors of the ride. Um, it's called Moto Bar. If you're up here in Noosa Heads, it is definitely a place to hang out. It's a destination, especially for people like Cameron and myself. It's, it's a bit of surfing. As you can see, there's motorbikes everywhere. Um, we're not the typical hairdressers in the fact that, uh, you know, we just always talk about fashion. We're like, we're like, we're like the boys things as well. So I uh, should introduce you to my good friend, Cameron. Cameron, it's nice. good to see you, mate. So so what are we doing? And you've got a beautiful model here today. Thank you for popping in. Uh, this is um, this is Bailey, and uh, Bailey's um, she's been a model for the salon for many many years, and I managed to sneak her and get her as a model over the last couple of years. Um, Bailey, what I've actually done on Bailey is uh, already pre-cut underneath, and I've already sort of coloured just from a time point of view. So this was a uh, all one length bob, and I just popped in a nice little sort of shape bob. Uh, through the underneath, trying to get more of a solid structure underneath with a very, very soft outline. And then I'm going to be popping in a short sort of fringe. And I'll be going through a few different techniques and um, scissor, uh, sort of um, chip it in and slide it in possibly. And I like to sort of work with solid sort of foundations but with a really sort of soft edge. and. I'm not one of these type of hairdressers that tends to do you know, everything held out at 90 degrees. Hairdressers don't really work on degrees, we work on feeling. And if the hair feels right as it falls down, this is something that sort of gets us excited and sort of motivates me. Do you mind if I ask you some questions as we work yeah, through? Great, right. you know we like to sort of have a chat. Can you multitask? Can you go ahead and answer questions at the same yeah, time? That would be awesome. Um, so just as I was having my breakfast this morning, I've just jotted down a few, a few questions for you. And, um, I guess one of the things that I'm always interested in is, is what do you love most about choosing hairdressing as a career? I think that's a good question, Clive. You know, I think um, if I can have a week where I can do, and this is your job, lots of different things, so whether I'm in the salon, whether I'm meeting people, whether we get a chance to work on workshops behind stages, Transforming somebody's look and how they feel is, is an amazing sort of thing. The other thing that excites me, I've been hairdressing for a long time, and uh, how hairdressing has changed over the years is, is amazing. We, um, you know, back in the sort of 50s, 60s, we had hairdryers came on the scene, so that completely sort of changed hairdressing. We then had a technology where we started changing the structure of the hair, whether it was perms, and colour sort of improved. You know, 80s, 90s, we started getting into straightening irons, so that sort of changed the actual industry. The other thing that sort of changed the industry now is the internet. You know, um, we have uh, forums. I know Muck was one of the first ones that I came across where we had these chat rooms from all around the world. So um, our girls and myself, we can do a colour, we can post it online, and somebody in Italy or Ireland or England and sort of comment about that particular colour and ask you what you used. Um, and vice versa, we can actually ask somebody that's working in uh, Paris, you know, hey, what's that colour you're using and that formula? And they will actually give us the colour. Whereas years ago, everybody was very secretive, weren't they? You know, nobody told, told anybody else what they were using or it was all top secret. Whereas now, education is shared. Yeah, educate and share. I mean, <clears throat> I listened to Sean Dawson recently on How to Cut It podcast in the UK, and he, excuse me, <clears throat> he refers to 
to doing research, you know, back in the day when we were in school, if you wanted to research anything, you went to a big building in town that had lots of books in it, and uh, as we're now, you can do it all on your phone, and, uh, you know, you just basically Google it, and uh, mm. it, the information is just right there at your fingertips, and, and hairdressing is no different, and that, and I think that goes with, with businesses as well, I mean, would you not say that, like, reviews on salons, and, you know, people can now comment Mm -hmm. uh, online about, about your business. Do you think, do you think, have you found that that's something yeah, that's quite relevant? Definitely. In you know the early days, people used to worry about reviews. You know, reviews are good. Reviews actually just keep you on on the edge. And um, even if it's a bad review, it's how you respond to that. Yeah. You know, I go into a restaurant. And sometimes the the meal is not always hot. You know, but if I actually explain to the guy in the restaurant, hey, look, it's not quite what I actually envisioned. In, you know, visualized, yeah. um, it's up to them to actually sort it out. You know, I was in a business just the other day and it was to do with some banners and uh, there was a bit of a miscommunication in the, uh, when I actually needed the banner, so I needed it sort of pretty soon. And they basically, you know, communication problem, they messed up, but they dealt with it in such a good way that, you know, I'll go there every time. You know, they've become a loyal client. It was how they control the situation. I wasn't angry, Be these things happen. And it gave them the opportunity to go, you know what, no, yeah, we messed up. I mean, yeah. feedback is important, isn't yeah. it? I mean, when we, finish, uh, when we finish a client, for instance, when Bailey's finished her haircut, if she was in the salon situation, mm -hmm. I think it's important to, it's very valuable for any business to find out, um, you know, after the event, not during, but after yeah. the event, what, what, what that experience was like. I mean, I know in our own, in our own salon in Sydney, we have, with all new clients, we do a follow-up blow-dry. Um, in two every within a two week period, and that's you know someone gets to wash it and wear it and all that kind of stuff. I think nowadays running any small business is challenging, and I think getting feedback from 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 your clients basically is, is, is one of the most valuable things you can get because you can shape and change and, mm -hmm. and bob and weave your business accordingly. You know, because um, we don't get it right all the time, but it's important. I think we take that. Would you say we take that uh, information on board? Take it on board, yeah, and it actually gives you an opportunity for all the um, all your team to sit down. You know, I actually you reminded me then of an experience of um, a short friend of mine, uh, and um, the friend of mine she had this experience in the salon where she just felt as though when she came into the salon, um, she was rushed. The whole process was sit down, consultation, to the backwash, then. Uh, head back, da -da 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 -da, and then straight in, straight out. Now, this lady's a single lady. It's not a not a sexual thing, but she's actually not touched physically for six weeks. You know, the first point of contact is us. Yeah. So if I go steaming in and sort of, you know, it's just a horrible experience. You know. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if we do the whole process, um, and you know, she's taken back. She's got two children. She's a single mother. That shampoo experience is a really, Very really valuable. good thing, valuable for her. And she just took me to one side one day and just said, look, you know, that was, just wasn't quite what you normally sort of, um, you guys do. So that gave me the opportunity to sit down with the team. Hey, look, this has actually come up. No names, nobody needs to know. But this is what was important to that client. Not what she was paying, not what was the haircut. That experience, you know, so. It's funny you should say that, because many years ago, uh, I worked with a very close friend of mine and we went around the streets, so very similar to what we're doing now, very box pop video, and asked people what they loved most about going to a hairdressing salon and what they um, disliked most. And every single person on the street said, not one person said the haircut, they all said, what I love most is going to this shampoo basin and getting a head massage. And, and uh, that was really important to them. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. I mean, haircut's important, obviously. You want to yeah. look good and feel about what we do, but. Uh -huh. Most people come to enjoy that whole basin experience. And Maybe we've got an opportunity there, a business opportunity, just shampooing. So well, people just come in and just have, we have it here because we're we're on the coast. So um, having your hair shampooed here is quite a luxury. So people will come off the beach and they'll yeah. you know I think we, we charge a small amount and then they have the hair shampooed, put a bit of conditioner on, towel dry, off they go. And it's like you said, it's just they feel fresh right here on holiday. So they feel fresh before they go out for the night. I tell you it's something interesting that we've just done in, in our salon and we do a lot of shampoo based and training in the, in the salon uh, for getting assistants ready to work in, in salons and um, 
And so when we run the training, we, we actually put it out on social media that we're looking for live people to get their hair shampooed, uh, massaged with, with you know, great products, luck products, obviously, and just a rough dry on a Sunday. And we actually market it as uh, it's a hangover cure. You know, what's better to come in on a Sunday or Monday and get your, get your hair washed? And what we're using it for is we're just using it for training. But what we do with every person that, that, that we book in, and they, we get them through our local social media site, you know, within with the community. And we sometimes go through 50 or 60 people over the weekend. But every single person gets a voucher to come back and u to use in our salon over the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So where else would you gain a client drive of 60 people up to 60 people over one weekend and it's all done by people wanting a shampoo. So it's a really great, it's a great way to, to help grow your business. But next question I've got for you Cameron is if someone was thinking about hairdressing as a career, right, say you're finishing school this year and you're thinking well I quite like uh, you know to be involved in the beauty or the fashion industry and I'm, looking, I'm wanting to seriously take up or seriously look at starting to become a hairdresser. What advice would you give them? That's a great question. You know, I think with any job, you've got to go and spend time in it. And I'd be tempted to actually go to a salon and just say, hey, look, I'm really thinking of being a hairdresser. Come in, come in a hairdresser. Can I just come and spend the day with you? You don't need to pay me. Just, just I want to spend the day. I want to hang out. I just want to see what it's like to be a hairdresser. Most salons will... Almost like an internship. Yeah. They'll, Right hand up. And to be honest with you, a lot of, if somebody did that, you know, we'd quite often, we'd actually pay them anyway, you know, um, uh, just because of, uh, we'd actually get them doing things and, and experience what it's like to be a hairdresser. The other thing is, I would, I would say to them, it is a career, that you can travel all around the world, you know, we've both been very, very lucky, we've both sort of travelled through hairdressing. No two days are the same, you're never actually really watching the clock. There's no other career like it. But also it's a career where you can actually dictate, first of all, how much you actually earn. So, whether it's more clients you do, more work you do, it's, it's a career that goes into so many different sort of branches. You can become a uh, manager of a salon, a salon trainer, owner of a salon. You can work on magazines, work on fashion shows, work on special effects, work on uh, with weeks, uh, work at the theatre, um, it's endless, you know, there's just, it's like, you know, a I think career I, within career. I mean, I think Sally Brooks has really nailed that in a film recently, uh, British Hairdress of the Year, last two years. Sally Brooks has made a film called The Journey to My, My Destination. And one of the things that I think is so inspiring about that film is, is that whatever you choose to do in life, whether you want to be a mum and have kids or run your own business or you want to travel the world or whatever it is, you want to start your own product line, work for a product company, Whatever it is, do session work, do photo, do photo work. You can do it within the, within hairdressing. It's all different um, aspects of, of this career, isn't it? Mm. It's not just standing behind a chair and, and just going to hair every day. Well, it can be if that's what you want. If that's what you want. Yeah. You know, I mean, especially as now with the, with the explosion of barbering as well. Mm -hmm. Bar barbershops are, you know, I can't often refer to uh, you know, barbershops as being almost like the video stores of the 80s, right? Mm -hmm. There were there was one in every every village and every town. That's where when I I worked in a barber shop when I was at when I was at school and you know at the time it was a dying trade you know and it's really come back onto the scene and uh, you know it's very much a man's world isn't it mm. yeah definitely you know? and I think um, the other thing here to do as well is just prepare to put the hours in you put the hours in you get rewarded you know yeah. it's it's like everything don't expect to suddenly be able to walk in the salon pick up a pair of scissors and within two weeks I'm going to be cutting hair. You know, you've got to really sort of get to know the sort of the craft um, and find out whether you want to go into colouring or cutting or um, more into the product development sort of side and then stick to it and, and just work like crazy. I became obsessed. Back in the sort of 80s, 90s, I became really, really obsessed with it and um, whether it was a good thing or whether it was a bad thing. Uh, then I actually sort of thought, right, well, okay, where do I want to sort of take this? Do I want to sort of be a salon owner? Do I want to work you know, with product companies? Or, and I just decided I just want to be able to do whatever comes through the door, have the tools to be able to do, uh, you know, that hair, whether it was short hair, long hair, 
if there was anything I couldn't do, I'll, I'll practice. I even do now. You know, if I've got somebody in on a Saturday, the, the, a wedding or something, I'll, have, I'll get the mannequin out on a Wednesday or Thursday and have a go at what we're supposed to be doing. So I'm prepared and when, when it just comes through the door. We don't test on animals, right? We, we test on mannequins and clients. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, would you, I mean, I often refer to this canvas, would it be fair to say that it's like anything in life. If you, did, if you want to, I mean, Australia is it, it's bred in our culture here because I am an Australian now, mm -hmm. is that, you know, sport is a big part of what we do. And so when you're 12, 13 uh, years of age, and you, you do, most kids do sport here. They either do football or swimming or rugby or AFL, whatever it may be. It's like anything, you know, you can, you can really want a passion, a driving desire to do something, but without the right uh, coaching, mm -hmm. you know, like swimming, and swimming's a great example. You know, if you just got in a pool and tried really hard, mm -hmm you're actually not going to achieve a great deal. You need someone to actually teach you, you know, how, stroke, to, how to breathe, yeah. how to stroke correction, yeah. you know, all those things. Just trying hard is not going to be cut yeah. the mustard, right? So, yeah. and I often use that as a good analogy when talking, and as an educator myself, and that is that you can't just get in and just think, well, by, I'm just going to keep practicing, practicing, I'm going to get better, because you need to be coached as in to get rid of bad habits. And, mm -hmm. Think that's fair to say? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I think even even now, you know, a lot of the really good hairdressers are still learning. You know, you never you never think you you know you it all. Stop, right? Yeah, and I've never been the type of person that I think, oh, I'm all it. You know, I'm this fantastic sort of hairdresser. I, I just sort of think, that, you know, you've got to sort of learn and you've got to really sort of push yourself. Maybe he's uh, learning right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just I don't know. It's just having that hunger. And um, I, I, I have one problem, I never say no, and you just get involved in so many things. <laughs> this is looking fabulous, by the way. I'm loving this colour you've got spilling out underneath. Do you mind if I just have a look No, you go for it. See, that looks fantastic. Yeah. So what we did there, that was um, uh, pre-lighting first, um, using muck, and then um, 7766, seven, uh, with red concentrated, uh, with a tiny little bit of violet. Um, I, I just, I'm really into colour that sneaks out. Um, Kelly, uh, Bailey works in retail, so it gives her the opportunity of being able to, uh, you know, you advertise your work. Yeah, yeah. and it's sort Perfect. of, uh, it can be hidden, uh, or it can be just slowly sort of sneak out, and you have like little sort of flashes, flashes of colour. Um, so, and I, I love surprises. So if Bailey puts her head down and she's in a shop or a coffee shop, something like that. You see a little flash of colour. It's um, I don't know. I just I think it's cute. I've it's just beautiful. always been a fan of introducing that kind of work to clients. So you mentioned that it's a muck colour. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I work with muck as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about muck. Um, muck's a family business, by the way. Uh, Family-owned business, Australian-owned. Uh, I think it's the only well, it's the only Australian brand that that is a colour line. As a wet line, styling line, and electrical. I think it's the only one in the country that mm -hmm. has, has all three. Um, and the thing I love most about it is it, what was the the, what the, attraction? Was the attraction to Muck for you as a business? Okay, um, we we were with one brand for thirty five years. Got to be honest, thirty five years, and we had the whole salon designed around the shelves were designed around the sort of company. So. We were just never going to move. That that was going to be the change. And then, as in storage, as in storage and sort of products and yeah, you know, just, uh, the company we had before they, they were round cans, you know, and they went into round slots. Right. <laughs> so it's as basic as that. And um, we were happy with the company. We we weren't not happy with the other company, but I just felt as though we got to a point where we got you you plateau. You plateau in, in Hedison, you need something else down there. So we were looking elsewhere, and um, a uh, lovely girl, Kim, um, she's a good friend of the salon, and, and she actually worked with this other product company. And we'd sit and we'd have chats and we'd have coffee and that kind of thing. And she said, You know, hey, there was no pressure. She said, I'm working for this company and this is what I do, and um, I'll leave you some products sometimes. And we said, Oh, hey, Kim, look, we're, we're really happy, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with this sort of product. She, she said one thing to me, she said, Cameron, this is a hybrid colour. You have one tube, five different lotions. And you, uh, whatever lotion you mix it with, decides whether it's permanent, semi-permanent. 
kind of thing, and walked away. She just left me with that little seed. I went back into the salon and I said, hey Liz, just say something. I think this is revolutionary. I think this is amazing. And, um, oh yeah, yeah, what is it? I'll, some more, I'll just explain to you. We're busy now. And same again, I just left her with that thought. We then looked into it. Um, as we uh, wanted to sort of progress and become more environmental friendly uh, with everything that we were sort of using and very conscious of what we sort of use, um, milk is 80% um, more derived from uh, plant extracts. So, you know, less chemicals in the hair. And we felt, you know, that could be good for us, our, our salon. So, so vegan as well. Yeah, yeah, vegan, which is, you know, is very important. So we said, look, the only way we're going to move is we've got to test it. So, and we said, we've got to really, really test it. So we literally got five models in and we just go around different scenarios and that kind of thing. And um, we didn't really tell the rest of the team what we were doing. We just wanted them to test this particular color. Yeah. So we didn't want to be forced into going into anything just because what we wanted to do, we wanted the team to get behind it. So it's performance based. So it's almost like we wrapped up the colour before they actually could see what it was. They put it on, the shine was just insane. They were actually just chomping at the bit. And it reminded me of a DJ, remember the DJs that used to have white labels? Yeah, no, yeah and they used to cover up the labels. Yeah, they used to cover up the labels so you couldn't see yeah. uh, who which record it was. Well, it was because they were bootleg. Bootleg? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So it reminded me of that. Anyway. We tested it, it blew us all away, and we decided, right, that's it. You know, we'll get it all in. And um, it's actually quite a funny story because um, we ordered, the stock arrived, and we were chomping at the bit to actually get it. All the boxes were there. We went to put it in the shelves, and it didn't fit. It didn't fit. <laughs> Nobody thought to measure the actual uh, actual box. So you so, can't put a square tube in a round hole. In a round, round, round hole. <laughs> So I actually, I spent, <laughs> I spent all weekend, and I'm not kidding, redesigning these boxes and slightly sort of just so they'd actually fit in. And there was no way I was going to take all these sort of shells down and that kind of thing. So um, the, um, anyway, the top of model, we've been using it for over a year now, and um, we can't get enough of it. it it's, it's amazing. It sort of just performs. It's true to its uh, tone. It's actually got, now Liz is my business partner, and Liz and I have been ahead of for, for many, many years. And it's actually got us excited about colour. I've always been a cutter, awesome. and I've always been a short haired cutter. Yeah. And I do colour, but um, I generally do colour because of I know where I actually want it to land. And um, it just got us excited again, you know. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press on and just explain a little bit, because I'm going to cut the fringe. And so I've just gone through with my shape. And because I pre-cut it underneath beforehand, I can, and that's purely just for speed and time. And then I've gone through. Now, with, uh, there's so many different terms, point cutting, chipping in, um, and with fine hair, if you do come in at this angle, you will get a stronger, thicker sort of strand. If you come in through this way, you have a wispier sort of end. By coming in closer to the roots, it acts like scaffolding and it pushes the hair out. By going through to the ends, it just makes it softer. And what I'm doing, I'm doing it in sort of like a crescent shape, so the hair will actually just have a little bit of a bend to it, so it's sort of not too sort of flat. It's looking fabulous. It's Do you know one of the things I can see from here is I can see the, the shine band mm -hmm. through, the, through the apex of the head there. It's, it's really stunning. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, it's really, really good, good stuff. But I don't think you're going to really enjoy this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to on with the fringe. Now, um, I'm really, really lucky. I have a lot of clients that have a good, strong, short fringe. Uh, fringes are my thing. I, I just love good, strong have you got fringes. One? Yeah, I've got a fringe. I've and got it's so, it's uh, now back about <laughs> here somewhere. But no, no, no. So, um, I'm just going to cut the fringe and then um, we will uh, can carry on. So, if I do go quiet for a little while. And do you find that do you want me to talk to you? Yeah, yeah, no, go for it. Yeah. Do you find that you mainly use one pair of scissors throughout the day, or do you use multiple? I'm multiple yeah. pairs. Yeah, I, I, I used to be a bit of a, a scissor holic, yeah. if you could call it that. And I think at last count, I think I had 37 pairs. But Jeez. I'm saying that, I have been hairdressing for a long time, and um, and like by yourself, you, know, you get given scissors to work with to try out. And... Um, so 
we, we're a very lucky bunch of hairdressers where we do have to pay for them. And you know, these tools, you get what you pay for. And, um, but I, I actually I really like it when I've got, usually there's about three I have on the go. So ranging from sort of five inch to around about six and a half inch, depending on whether I'm doing scissor over comb. Um, and I'm a big razor fan as well. I do like razors. But cutting short hair is my, my thing, and I just love um, working with sort of shapes. I actually have spoken to a few sculptors over the years, and um, talking with sculptors is amazing because they, they work on substances that come from, they, they make them, uh, they actually make shapes. Whereas we work with a curved surface. We work with straight hair, curly hair, wiry hair. It's all coming from a curved surface. So it amazes me how hair falls. And hairdressers love it when you're actually tested as well. So if you get tested with a type of hair, and a lot of people say, oh, my hair sticks up, or my hair does this. Do you find that quite the actual hairdressers get really excited then because they've got a challenge do you know one of the, the things that uh, the question I love being asked by my clients is which which hair do you like cutting most? Do you prefer cutting men or women or do you prefer cutting short hair styles or or long hair? You know, it's such a bizarre question. Yeah. I mean, I just like cutting hair. Mm. And I mean, I think most of my clientele are people that have come to me that have got challenging growth patterns or challenging. And I've nailed it, mm -hmm. and their clients are like, mm -hmm. you know, they I quite often hear people say, "Oh, no one cuts my hair like you," mm -hmm. and which is which is beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I love my job so much. It really just sits out. You know, mm -hmm. As we mentioned earlier on, there's not many jobs you can come to work. In fact, I was talking to your old boss yesterday, Colin, mm -hmm. and he said he still works one day a week, right? He loves it. He loves it. You know, and he said to me, I never, I've never done a day's work in my life. Mm, that's he, so true. He said, I come and I just hang out and I cut people's no, hair. That is so true. He's never, no, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. come and hang out. You know, he said, no, he loves hanging out and cutting hair. And it's like, that's, I think, that's so true of what we do. I yeah. mean, I think, and I think this is one of the things, it's another topic of conversation is where, you know, when we're trying to attract people into this industry, we need to really show these benefits of it's not just all about hitting KPIs and, and mm. being the busiest, you know, it's about really enjoying what we do every day and that's making people feel good about what we've done. Mm. You, know, you know, people always say, to, some, the other question I get asked is, is like, have you ever fucked up someone's hair? Mm. And, I, and I find look at them with bewilderment, like, you know, do you think I've got like cutting Tourette's or something? <laughs> like, a, like a big whack out or something. I said, no, no, I mean, have I done the, the, a beautiful haircut on the wrong person? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I think that you know that comes from training and practice, and, and you, know, you can do the most perfect bob mm. on someone with a wide jaw, and it, you know it looks horrendous. And mm. so, you know, there's all different aspects to this job, but I think that it's not just about the cutting or whatever. Every hour, and I say this to my staff or to our staff, every hour in salon, the the stage gets reset. You know, your 10 o'clock appointment may be uh, getting married. Your 11 o'clock appointment may be going to a funeral. You know, and whatever you hear, and we hear some beautiful stories and some tragic stories throughout the, throughout our week. Mm -hmm. And it's important to just, mm -hmm. when the hour's finished, mm -hmm. you decompress, you shake it off, and you move on. You know, uh, do you find that? Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's funny. Um, I, I've worked with... Um, girls and guys, and the same sort of thing, they actually found, uh, they come into work, and work is their little safe zone, Yeah. you know, they might not be having a good experience at home, or uh, elsewhere in their life, but because they're coming in and talking to people, just just talking to people, you know, it's, it's amazing how that can uh, make such a difference to somebody else's life, you know, and 
I'm sure all hairdressers are the same. We, we do have clients that come to you for a haircut. But quite often, sometimes the haircut they have, you know, Joe Bloggs could do it down the road. But because... I've been to they, it. Yeah. <laughs> you cut my fringe off. But because they can connect to you, uh, connect with you, and, um, you know, some clients have told me some things that, uh, you know, that they've never actually ever told anybody else, mm. you know. Um, and, you know, that's the one thing with hairdressers, you know, it's, uh, we've always said, you know, that you can tell us anything. I, I often, sorry, I was just going to say, I often say to my clients that, um, tell me anything, because I'll actually never remember all the full story afterwards anyway. Incidentally, that brings me up to this, which is quite a controversial subject at the moment. There's an ad on TV at the moment for a certain home loan company, which I won't mention, uh, and it actually portrays hairdressers as being, their, their whole national marketing is don't rely on your know-it-all hairdresser, um, which is quite controversial, I think. And I think, do you think that, as you've just mentioned, people tell us their deepest, darkest secrets, and we're also uh, giving people advice. We are, I think Abraham Lincoln said, if you want to know what's going on in the world, ask, ask the hairdresser or the barber in that case, and the taxi driver. Because we, you know, we kind of, we're speaking to people all day long. What are your thoughts on that? That's so right. You know, they, uh, there's certain subjects that we will avoid. You know, the usual uh, subjects that, um, that that people actually have an opinion on. You know, they're the subjects that we have to sort of avoid. And um, you know, your politics and your, you know things like that. Uh, the the other thing that I um, I think which is important is yes, all clients feel safe. You know, in the salons, that you're not going to gossip, you're not going to sort of tell anybody else. Um, you know, we have a lot of couples that come into the salon, and um, you know, I, I used to, yeah, I used to have a mother and a daughter situation where the mother would come in the day after, and the daughter had been in. She used to come up from come up from London, and um, the mother would quiz me on what the daughter was talking about. And you know, and is she, yeah, is she getting married or is she not getting married and that kind of thing? And I used to say, well, she's going to be right business because when the baby arrives, <laughs> she won't be the baby. <laughs> no, and, you know, and it's quite confidentiality, so it's um, it's quite a personal thing. You know, the thing that I think's changed is all time. You know, years ago with guys, we used to have um, we talk about footy, talk about cars, talk about motorbikes, which is great. Now I, I mean, find, still do. Yeah, but I find a lot of guys now they'll open up and they'll talk about you know I'm going through a divorce. You know, I, I'm having trouble with, with work, and that's completely changed. It's, it's turned turned around now. And now the other thing is, women are into sport. <laughs> so the oh, women yeah. are talking about sport. I think, you know, the David Beckham's of the world and things like that. That's sort of brought you know sport to the front. And um, the thing is, the women know stats, and they they would come in and say, "What do you think about this particular game or that game?" And I have to sort of quickly look on my phone to see, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. And obviously, I've just been watching the Ashes for the last couple of months, and uh, one of the things that really impressed me about the coverage of the Ashes was uh, this is the, the, the female uh, presenters, were, they knew more, more stuff than Mark Tubby Taylor after that. <laughs> That's right. It was, um, yeah, it's good. Every sport you watch now, it's all, it's all there. And especially if it's a couple of the women's AFL is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, to think of where... Anything's possible, right? Yeah. I remember a chat, we did a thing at Muck with a ladder project where we take underprivileged kids and they go through a whole, well, we help them have makeovers. They've, mm. they've, been, they've been unfortunate in, in the cards that they've been dealt as they've been growing up. And I had a big long chat to one of the AFL players, I think she was from Essendon, and I said, what's it been like playing your first season and going out in front of the MCG? And she was like, just be careful what you wish for. She said, 12 months ago, we were going to a, an oval that was dimly lit and getting changed in the car. Wow. And she said, you know, yeah. it's been 12 months on going out in the three games before, you know, 80,000 people at the MCG. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest with you, that's, this is the way the world is now, right? I mean, like, back in the day, if you wanted to become a rock star, you would have to form a band and play in the local pub and build your way up like the Rolling Stones did over a 20-year period. You should enter a singing competition now on, on TV and come from Wobble Wobble and the next thing you know you're packing out the entertainment centre. Mm. You know, when there's a period of six weeks. Mm. It's crazy. It's quite yeah. scary. It's crazy. Yeah. Ah, it's exciting as well. Mm. Kids love it. They, they, they laugh it up. That's where we might need a bit of a, a pep talk.
Alrighty, so just to recap what I've been doing is um, I cut underneath, so I had like a real solid sort of line coming through underneath. And what this does, it gives me options when uh, Bailey B, she can tie her hair back. She's got this really strong, strong sort of shape underneath. And then just some softer, softer edges just coming through. Uh, we've come through and cut, uh, I'm sort of real Joan of the Art quite cringe person. Um, I just, I think they're super cute. And um, Bailey just rocks a short fringe. And it's exciting when I sort of see, I think that's the thing, if I get excited from a haircut, when, when I'm doing clients, I talk, 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 and then I go quiet all of a sudden. And usually clients go, he's really getting excited now <laughs> because of the haircut. That's usually when I think I've left the iron off. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I used to work with a photographer uh, many, many years ago, and um, you know, we, we paid we paid him to do the job. And then he, uh, when he put a film... This is going I can't remember, it. just brief and say, but thank God I'm getting paid. <laughs> When he put a film in for himself, I knew I had something. Because yeah. as hairdressers, we get this ego thing, yeah, we think it looks cool and that kind of thing. But when he put a film in for himself and, and actually took pictures, I knew something was special happening, you know? Yeah. And I, yeah, I can honestly say, you know, that did happen a few times. Not, not every time. He just did his job. But when he saw something, he got excited. And then that, for me, I get excited then. So. Awesome.